Hey guys, welcome to Amy's Cooking. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you for joining me. And in this video, I will be sharing with you how to make a delicious, refreshing dessert called coconut jelly or in Vietnamese is tat yu. So summer is just around the corner and there is nothing that beats this dessert on a hot summer day. So I figure I could show you my version of this dessert. I grew up eating this and it does bring back a lot of fond memories. Now I make it often for my daughter and she truly enjoys eating it. So I hope you guys will enjoy it as much as we do. And as always, I will leave all the measurements and ingredients in the description box below the video. But before we get started, do me a big favor and hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. So I think the hardest part with this recipe is extracting the juice from these young coconuts. But it's that fresh juice that's going to enhance the taste of this dessert. So we don't mind the extra work. And then we, I mean my husband. So if you have someone around with extra muscles, they can definitely help this part. I usually don't do this part. But if done properly, I think it's not too tricky. So the first thing is to remove the husk. You will only need to remove Move enough to make an opening at the top but big enough that you can pour the jelly back into the coconut later. Now once the husk has been removed from the coconut shell use the back edge of the knife with force and crack it. Use a heavy knife if you have one it's going to be more sturdy and it's going to generate more force when you crack into the shell. Then slowly wiggle the knife some and continue to make the cut and then pop it open like you see here. Now please be extra careful with this step. Hang on to the coconut tightly so it doesn't slip under you. Okay, I don't want you guys to get hurt. Um, but it's also important to remove the top, not completely. You still need to leave about an inch intact so that you can close it back up after you fill it with the coconut mixture. Now once it's open, pour the coconut juice through a strainer to remove any debris. You will need about two to two and a half liters of this juice for, the, for this recipe. And it doesn't have to be exact. It's, this recipe is pretty forgiving. But you can buy these young coconuts at any of the Asian grocery stores. Now, if you can't find them or if you don't want to deal with opening them, then you can definitely use coconut water from the can to replace. Um, these can easily be found in any of the grocery stores, but just make sure that you buy the one that says not from concentrate. I will say though, each brand does have a slightly different taste to them. Some might be sweeter than others. So if you know of a brand that you like the taste of, then use that one. You might have to just taste test the juice and see how sweet it is so that you can adjust the sugar in the recipe. Now for the jelly powder, we are using the Dragon brand today. It's made from agar agar, which is sort of similar to gelatin, but it is not. Um, but its purpose is to help congeal and settle the coconut solution. Um, but you know, when using this powder, I find that the hardest part is its tendency to form a clump when you add it to liquids. I will show you here how to prevent that. So what you want to do is take the powder and mix it thoroughly into the sugar. That will kind of help disperse the powder and reduce the likelihood of clumping when you add it to the liquid. Once it, it, it's mixed well, remove about three tablespoons of this and set it aside. Because the jelly that we're making today will have two layers. You're going to have a pure coconut layer on the bottom and then you're going to have a layer on top with the coconut cream. So the reserve mixture will be used for the coconut cream solution. Okay. I think we are at this point ready to cook it. So this next step is very important. Now let the coconut juice heat up just until it's steamy, then pour in the jelly powder mixture. This mixture um, needs to be done, this, this part, the, when you pour it in, it needs to be done very slowly. 
for only a little bit at a time like you see here, if you pour in a large amount at once, it will clump it's, and once it's clumped, it is very difficult to dissolve them. Now you would have to cook it much, much longer and it's just gonna be a really, really big hassle. Okay, so once they're all in, turn the heat to medium high and continue to cook the solution until you no longer see any granules. This is a must. If you don't cook it all the way, the jelly will be like a sand jelly once it's set. I know it's done when there's just no more granules on my spoon, like when I scoop out some of the juice and I pour it off the spoon, I don't see any residual granules on my spoon. That's how I know that is completely cooked through. Now cooking time will depend on how much juice uh, you end up using and how high your heat is, but usually it will take between, let's say seven to nine minutes uh, once you start cooking it. Now and then um, you also do want to just skim off the top layer to remove some of that debris from the boiling. Once the, once the solution is done, you want to pour out about one third into a different pot. We will use this portion for the coconut cream layer. I like to use the Savoy brand is a cream so it's much creamier and more flavorful but if you can't find that one you can definitely use like coconut milk that will be fine. Um, the can has about 400 ml of cream in here and I'm adding in about 200 ml of the to the mixture and once I um, add the cream in I'll bring it back to a boil and just kind of mix it all in well. Um, and then once it's completely mixed and, and um, uh, thoroughly, then start pouring in the reserve jelly powder. Again, the same as before, it needs to be added in very slowly to avoid clumping. Now, since the solution is still very hot, there's gonna be some clumps, but that's okay. They will dissolve once you begin to cook it. Uh, use the same test as you did for the clear layer and just to make sure all the granules are dissolved before turning off the heat. I like to add in a pinch of salt to help balance out the sweetness is optional, but I do highly recommend doing that. It just gives that cream layer richer in flavor. Okay, now that we have both mixtures cooked, let's start pouring them. Keep in mind that the solution will begin to solidify as it starts to cool down. Now and then you might have to stir and warm it up again so that the top layer doesn't become solid. Should this happen, let's say if you had to step away or you took longer to pour them into the individual containers, um, then just put it back on the heat and warm it up again. I usually pour it into small glass bowls, just right size for single servings. I will also add it back into the coconut itself. Okay, so on to the last critical step, uh, which is when you pour, you want to make sure that the first layer is congealed before adding in the coconut cream layer. If you don't, then the two layers will mix together as one. Now, Use the tip of your finger and touch the jelly. Just make sure your hands are clean and you only have to test it on one. Um, but it should still be bouncy, but it, none should stick to your finger. That's when you can pour in the cream layer, but just do pour it in very slowly so it doesn't sink to the bottom and break through that first layer. It's also really important to note that if you wait too long though for the first layer to harden, then the two layers will kind of fall apart when you serve it. Just as soon as it's kind of the top layer, the, the very surface is congealed, you can start pouring in the coconut cream. So this dessert should be served cold. It needs to be in the refrigerator, refrigerated. Um, for at least four hours or even better if you can leave it overnight and serve it the next day. And that's it. That is how you make coconut jelly. If done correctly, you will have two beautiful uh, layers that are very distinct, but they do stick to each other. Now, if you want it to be even more fancy, you can make as many layers as you wish, which is super fun, especially if you have little ones. My little girl gets real creative with this recipe. 
So that's it. I truly hope that you enjoy this recipe tutorial. Please give it a try. It is so worth it. I promise. Let me know what you think. Comment below if you have any comments, suggestions, and if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe um, to the channel. It will mean the world. Uh, thank you for watching and until next time you guys stay healthy and safe and have a great day.